Hello everyone, and welcome to Tamron's Top 5 Photo Tips for Airshow Photography. Hi, I'm Tamron Tech Jeff, sometimes known as Jeff Allen, and welcome to my presentation. We'll get started right away. This shot was made at the end of the day after an air show had ended. Uh, a little thunderstorm was moving across the area and I had stopped to do some sunset photos looking over the fence. I was up in the back of the uh, the back of my pickup with the camera on a tripod and I was doing some exposures of the uh, sunset which I put the camera in manual exposure for uh, 1 80th of a second f11 at ISO 400 I wanted to get those nice colors of the backlit clouds in the sky as the sun was going down. There was also a little passing thunderstorm and that was my uh, my immediate interest. I used my MK Controls lightning bug device which uh, attaches to your camera and you uh, set it up so that it sees the infrared light that happens just before the visible flash of light in your frame. What happens is it fires the shutter and uh, you get the shot and it's not quite that simple. The thunderstorm is actually off to camera right mostly out of the frame and I was catching a few lightning bolts that were flickering down off onto the the right hand side of the frame and wasn't getting uh, really what I wanted and the <clears throat> the device was firing away and firing away and firing away and firing away and I was hoping that I would get lucky and some of the energy of the storm would end up uh, flickering a bolt in closer to the middle of my frame and with luck and some uh, patience and and uh, everything that goes into making a shot, uh, we got lucky, and the uh, the image happened. So that's kind of the extreme for uh, for creating air show shots. Uh, the P51 in the foreground was lit by the uh, lights, the floodlights on the ramp. So I had some uh, some foreground fill there, and the rest of it was just exposing for the sunset. So let's get to the meat and potatoes here. When you get out onto the ramp at an air show, if at all possible, uh, try and go with a group that has uh, access before or after hours. Uh, a photo club, the, uh, the sponsors of the air show sometimes will offer uh, access for, uh, for a fee. And uh, uh, maybe a camera store is co-sponsoring an event. Uh, or something like the uh, 15 to 30 millimeter shot on the upper left hand side of the frame. Uh, this was a charity fundraiser, a hangar dance that was held the night before the air show started. So it gave me the opportunity to get in with uh, access to a number of aircraft that they'd parked just inside and outside of a hangar. Uh, there were people in period costume at the dance and it was a fun time. But what it allowed me was access, and that's the great thing. I was able to photograph this beautiful B-17. The organizers of the event had lit it up with uh, just some simple uh, uh, home improvement store LED lamps that they'd set out on the, on the ground around the aircraft, but they did a nice job of lighting it. So I was able to shoot uh, with the... Uh, with the stabilization on on the 15 to 30 G2 lens. A uh, very simple shot, about a 15th of a second handheld, and the VC stabilizer in that lens gave me a nice, sharp, crisp, clean picture. In post, I converted it to black and white because it's a vintage aircraft, and simply in black and white with just that little hint of sepia tone added, it looked great. Punched up the contrast a little bit, and there's my image. The other advantage, if you look at that, uh, the lower left-hand shot of the uh, lightning, uh, again, a sunset shot, and after hours access again to the airfield uh, with, a, uh, with a camera store that was co-sponsoring this particular shoot, and we were able to shoot right at sunset. I got that nice starburst effect of the, uh, 
of the sun shining through uh, past their propeller on the aircraft. So that's another uh, fun type of shot. If you don't get those before and after hours access uh, uh, capabilities, certainly go out and shoot all day on the ramp. Uh, get there early. Uh, crowds are going to be smaller very early and very late in the day before and after the, uh, uh, the aerobatics part of the show starts. So uh, walk around the ramp. Be very careful with something like that, uh, uh, like the Electra up in the top right hand corner uh, that was uh, all chrome and uh, really reflective. So I had to be very careful with my exposure. Check your exposure regularly, review, check your histogram, and make sure that you're getting shots that, uh, that you're pleased with in terms of exposure too. Uh, fairly low ISO, stop down, you don't need a high shutter speed for static objects. Uh, the 90 millimeter lens uh, is a great lens to use for portraits and detail. Uh, just a nice short telephoto focal length for photographing. Uh, High, high detail items like the close-up of the uh, of the aircraft engine that I photographed there. Also, the 45 millimeter from Tamron makes a uh, a good close-up capability. Uh, you can get very close with the lens and fill up the frame with amazing detail, uh, like I did <clears throat> with the marker lights on that uh, on the on the wing of that aircraft. So. Uh, look for those detail things that don't necessarily have to uh, uh, be affected by large crowds at an airfield, which you're going to have uh, anytime you're visiting an air show. So that's on the ramp. Let's get out to the airfield and get into the air. Now here we have uh, the uh, upper left again. Shutter speed becomes very important when you're photographing aircraft, of course. Uh, the jets are going to need a very high shutter speed, but propeller aircraft, there's a sweet spot at a 250th of a second where you get a little uh, motion blur to the props, uh, but overall you have a sharp photo. I tried 125th of a second, got great motion blur on the, on the props on that helicopter, but the overall picture just isn't sharp. It was moving, I was moving, and even with lens stabilization, uh, camera subject motion uh, is is not going to be in your favor. So a 250th of a second for prop planes and as you see on the upper right side the uh, the B-17 flyover with the 150 to 600 I was able to fill up the frame with that. Sorry I'm blocking a little bit of that photo. Uh, but that gives you an idea again of uh, uh, that 250th of a second uh, panning with the subject, of course, and you get that nice motion blur in the props and still get a great shot of the of the uh, aircraft. When we move to the jets, closure rate on uh, on two fighter jets like this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand uh, thousand miles an hour ground speed. The planes are moving really fast when they're doing these aerobatic maneuvers. So at a thousandth of a second, uh, on the first day of the show, I didn't get quite enough. Uh, motion freeze. I needed to go to a four thousandth of a second, which I did on the second day of the show. You live, you learn, you uh, you go to shoot another day. If you can at an air show, most air shows are two days long, so uh, go and shoot the first day, review your photos, learn what you did right, learn what you did wrong, and also you know on the second day the aerobatic routines are going to be the same by the demonstration teams. So on the second day, you'll know uh, when the planes are going to do uh, the different maneuvers and the bypasses and so on. So uh, the second day, I was able to shoot at a 4,000th of a second, and that was a shutter speed fast enough uh, or quick enough short enough in duration, if you will, to get uh, to get that frozen motion of the two planes crossing. I had a little better shot with them right on top of each other the first day. The second one, they were a little bit past. And again, that's just something that's uh, uh, that you're going to shoot and shoot and shoot and uh, uh, be happy with eventually that uh, that you got some photos. Um, shoot with your camera in continuous frame mode for this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, shoot with continuous autofocus turned on. Uh, shoot with uh, uh, a single point or a small group of uh, spots in the center of your frame for focus. Now, I uh, I I do rely on autofocus, and I will uh, will use typically uh, for groups of aircraft. I'll use that that small group of uh, of, of clustered uh, 
focus points right in the center of the frame. A lot of cameras will let you move the focus points around and I'll do that if I'm following aircraft to try and keep them uh, in focus as they move around in the frame. So again, uh, practice, practice, practice. Set your camera on that continuous frame advance so that you can shoot as fast as possible. I'm fortunate to have a camera that shoots at 10 frames per second so I'm able to get big bursts and uh, and uh, get some uh, get some interesting shots uh, with the two jets I picked up the the plane that was coming from the right side uh, focused on it locked on and just started firing and I knew that the planes would eventually pass in front of one another uh, so again focus on one don't try and let them cross in your frame or you'll you'll never be able to capture that or if you do it's it's uh, it's an unusual circumstance. So that's something uh, to think about. Again, high speed frame rate and, uh, and small group focus. Also at the airport, you want to look for peak action. Planes are doing their maneuvers. You have a wing walker maybe uh, doing some unusual things. The, uh, the uh, frame in the lower left, uh, the plane had gone up and done a stall and was coming back and the, the nose of the plane was coming toward the crowd in the airfield. Uh, so again, nice peak of action uh, with that trailing smoke uh, gives the viewer a nice uh, kind of unusual leading line into the frame. Uh, the smoke trails that planes leave make for great leading lines. Also at, with, at the airfield you want to look for interesting juxtapositions. Uh, the uh, the heritage flights are very commonly uh, held at air shows where you'll have a vintage aircraft from uh, many, many years ago and a more modern aircraft. And sometimes you'll have t uh, three, four planes from different eras flying together that you're only going to see happen at an air show. So look for things like that to happen too. The air show announcers will announce when those kinds of things happen and they generally make several passes around the airfield. Also look for those unique one-of-a-kind moments. Uh, the bottom right frame was at an at a air race actually and a plane was taxiing out for a demonstration run as an F-16 was doing a, a quick flyby. And what I got there was again the old and the new and at that point I had my shutter speed set for that 250 of a second for the prop plane, and it's okay in that situation to have a little motion blur of the F-16 speeding by doing that just above the uh, runway uh, low pass uh, to, uh, to uh, make for an interesting shot. And again, that motion blur there shows that speed, that burst of energy from the plane, and it's okay to have it slightly blurry. You can still recognize the aircraft uh, for, a, for a jet fighter, the F-16. So that's a, that's a good thing to look at. When you go to the airfield, uh, if you can, uh, take two cameras or maybe borrow a second camera or rent a second camera because you'll want to have a telephoto lens on one camera and maybe a wide-angle lens on the other camera or two different focal lengths of telephotos. Uh, I will generally carry the 150 to 600 millimeter. This image was shot at 500 millimeters and when you get that beautiful telephoto compression coming in. It makes those planes look like they're stacked right on top of each other, impossibly close. And of course, they're flying at a safe distance apart. These pilots know what they're doing, but that telephoto compression really adds to the drama of a shot like this. So uh, a long telephoto is a good thing to have, but bring, you know, something like an 18 to 400 Tamron, a great all-purpose lens, a 70 to 300, a 100 to 400, or as this one was shot with, at about 500 millimeters, the 150 to 600. We'll go the other way. Uh, wrapping things up, also think about interesting events that might be happening in the sky. Earlier in the week, uh, before I went to this Fort Worth Air Show last year, I was at a, a landscape and nature photography conference, and I was seeing the moon set uh, and the moon rise happening later and later every day, and I thought by the time I get to the air show on the weekend, the moon might be in a good position to be photographed with a plane passing in front of it. Again, this was the second day of the air show. The moon sets and rises, or rises and sets, about 40 minutes later each day. So I took that into account. Uh, the first day the moon was a little bit high. I had some planes near it, but not really what I wanted in the frame. And the second day, <clears throat> again, this F-16 demonstration team plane 
took off and started doing his routines and I saw that uh, I was likely to get the plane in front of the moon, which actually happened. Uh, again, uh, picked up the plane as it was climbing up away from the airfield, uh, started firing with that high capture rate on my camera. Regardless of what capture rate your camera has, just uh, put it in continuous and fire away, and uh, I got the, the shot I was hoping for. And again, a little bit of uh, timing and a little bit of luck involved in, in some of these photos to get uh, that those once-in-a-lifetime shots. Uh, here I was shooting at ISO 800. And with most of the jets, I do go to ISO 800 even on a bright day, just so I can have a really fast shutter speed, and I have uh, a, a relatively small aperture for good depth of field. So again, I've got uh, a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, focus error protection by being able to shoot within the depth of field. But again, lock on to your subject and uh, continuous frame exposure. Also think about uh, uh, bright skies. You're generally going to be photographing subjects. A lot of planes are fairly light in color and of course you're going to be photographing them against a, a light blue sky or a cloud cover. So in this situation I also had to use exposure compensation uh, of uh, a plus 0 0.7. So opened up about two-thirds of a stop from what the camera's light meter would have given me and that way I have a correct exposure rather than a silhouette. So use your exposure compensation as well in those situations and review your photos regularly in the field. Check your histogram uh, or just review the images uh, so that you can see what you're getting and uh, check your exposures regularly to make sure that you're not getting things that are blown out or silhouetted. So uh, that's kind of an, an important thing to think about. Uh, kind of a brief time here and we'll wrap things up and I'll say that is the end. I want to thank you for joining me today. Again, my name is Tamron Tech Jeff, Jeff Allen. Uh, be sure and uh, look for me on the, uh, on the social media and also uh, check out tamron-usa.com for more great information. We have all kinds of tutorials and good things to look at in addition to product information. So thanks again for joining me today, and I'll say goodbye for now.